<laughs> Zoom decided, but everybody came back on finally, and we actually had a real good time the rest oh, of the class. That's good to good to know. Looks like we're good, so I'll make you post. Excellent, excellent, yes. And you are host again. Thank you, bye-bye. I'll stay in for the check-in. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, Todd's already on, so. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. we just hang out for just a little bit now, just to sort of, oh, actually, no, I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> it just says pushing my stream, so I will see you guys later. Okay, bye. Have a good one. Bye. Well, welcome everybody who's joining us by live stream. Uh, we're waiting for uh, a few minutes for uh, people to start joining the class. This is a class on uh, uh, organizing uh, files and folders on your uh, PC. Okay. And it doesn't really matter whether you've got a Mac or a, a Windows PC. Uh, the techniques are very similar, oddly enough. Um, so we'll... Uh, we're going to start letting people in that join us. Uh, for those of you that are live streaming, the people that join us uh, get uh, registered for an account on getsetup.io at our website. And uh, they're able to join and participate in our, our meetings. And uh, we offer interactive classes and uh, people can, uh, can join and uh, ask questions as we, uh, as we participate in the class. Uh, see some familiar faces. Hello, Yvonne. How are you? Hi, Good Bob. to see you. Nice to see where, you. Where are you. Where are you located? In Toronto, Canada. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Is it springtime there yet? We are getting there. You're getting there. Good, good. I used to work for a company that was based out of Edmonton. Uh, and I, I was your uh, West Coast, uh, California uh, representative for their customers. Uh, but uh, I traveled up to Edmonton uh, often uh, to visit the company headquarters. They're still having snow. Yeah, Edmonton stays colder longer. Yeah, yeah. That's a picture of Perth in the background. What, where is it? Perth, Australia. Oh, Perth, Australia. Oh, fantastic. Have you been there? Oh, about eight times. Okay, okay. All right. Well, we're waiting just, I'm going to give people a few more minutes to join us. Uh, uh, you're here for uh, organizing files on your PC. We have a, a teaching assistant, Todd, from Get Set Up uh, in our meeting today. If you have any technical difficulties, our, our last class Zoom kicked us off. But stay up. what happens is if, if you ever are on a Zoom meeting as a participant and for some reason the host vanishes, that's a technical issue. Uh, and just stay on the meeting for a few minutes and the host uh, usually will be able to come back. Um, and so that's, that happened our last meeting. I, I don't anticipate it happening again, but um, you never know with technology what, uh, what's going to happen. So you always can be surprised a little bit. Okay, so um, think about uh, questions you have on organizing files. You know, as we, we get more of our life uh, becomes digital, uh, and on our computers and smartphones and everything, keeping track of where things are uh, electronically becomes more of an issue uh, that we want to deal with all the time, okay? So we want to be able to manage that and uh, work with that uh, whenever we're, we're working. So I'm going to give you some hints and ideas on things that are techniques. Um, you know, we like, you know, uh, people to, to ask questions. So I'm going to Think, think about questions you have about organizing files, okay? And I'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit about them. Uh, for those of you who have had classes from me before, you know I'm based in Seal Beach, California. Uh, it's part of the Los Angeles metropolitan area. It's not, but it's a, a nice little beach town uh, that's a small community, but, uh, but we do a lot of things uh, there. Um, let's see, I think Todd started recording for me. Thank you. And uh, I was born in Chicago, so I know the Midwest uh, pretty well, but it's been a while since I've, I've been back. Um, I've lived in Atlanta, I've lived in Europe, I've lived in uh, Asia, I've lived in Latin America, so I've, I've traveled around the world a little bit. And on my own internet service company, I started doing training 
for adults and technology part-time about 2007 and then started doing it full-time 2009. And uh, I like trying to make technology a little bit easier to understand. To me, it's, it's about uh, the technology is a toy usually, but also can be a tool. So um, we like, uh, you know, having you here this morning. It's morning for me, afternoon for some of you I know, and maybe evening for others. But uh, we, you know, like being able to see, I can get your attention if you wave your hand. I can, you can get my attention if you use the reaction button on Zoom. Uh, if you put something in chat, Todd's helping me monitor chat. Um, and uh, if you're joining by live stream, we do encourage you to uh, set up an account at getsetup.io and uh, register for a class and you can participate as uh, you see other people participating. Uh, participants are able to attain a recording after class. Uh, if you send an email to help at getsetup.io, um, you can request a recording and Todd will probably post that in chat sometime soon. Um, we're gonna talk about some technology and companies and products. Uh, but we're not paid to promote anything uh, specific. So uh, they're just part of our, our training materials that we're covering today. So our agenda for today is helping you understand a little bit of the language of computer files um, and make sure you have an understanding of what you're working with. You know, we might have started out with our computers and not really ever thought about the need to keep things organized. And so we might have collected files and collected files and collected files more and more and more. And these days, everybody sends you things electronically. You know, you wanna get a copy of your tax returns, you, you get an electronic file lots of times. You get, wanna get a, a copy of a document or that you wanna reference or a, a, even the copy of the video that you get is an electronic file, it's just a video file. So we'll talk about what files are. We'll talk about how to use better names for files and folders and some tricks and techniques you can use for naming your files that people that accumulate a lot, a lot of files uh, have, have found works really well. And then we'll talk about some searching and sorting tools on your PC. Now, I just have a quick question. How many of you have a, a Windows computer, raise your hand and let me know. Okay, good. And, and does anybody have a Macintosh computer uh, at all? Okay, I don't see anybody. anybody uh, Tina, did you have a, a Windows or a Mac? I'm sorry, Windows. Okay, great, great. Okay, so this helps me out. I mean, actually the way files are organized is extremely similar uh, on both Windows and Macs because a computer file is, is a file no matter what you use it on. It's a file on the web, it's a file in the cloud, it's a file on your computer. Uh, Pilar, you have a Mac, okay, that's good to know. Um, and uh, we'll talk about you know some of the, the common things, but a file is a file, okay? So um, it, it doesn't matter what kind of computer or device you use, but finding them and organizing them is sometimes helpful. Okay, I'm gonna um, mute everyone here just because we have a little background noise. Uh, sometimes these computer microphones pick up a lot of information. So uh, I'm gonna use an older technology called a, a pen and paper. You remember those? Okay, some of you, okay. And, uh, but I just want to see if you have any uh, questions that you might have uh, before I go through some of the material on files and organizing files. Anybody have anything? And of course, we'll have questions as we go through things as well. But I just want to say if there's anything saying, gee, I hope he's going to cover this today uh, based on the agenda that you saw or anything like that. Anybody? Okay. I know everybody loves organizing files in their computers. It's one of the best, you know, most, great biggest hobbies you, you can have, right? Uh, but, you know, we get so much that, that it really helps to keep track of them. Okay, so Gail has something in chat. If we organize files as the way they, that the way they upload like to OneDrive. We'll talk a little bit about OneDrive. Uh, uh, and, and cloud storage and, and maybe help you understand. I do a class 
the cloud is, is uh, big in terms of, and small at the same time. And so I do a class on understanding the cloud uh, that kind of explains where stuff goes when you use it. But uh, we'll talk a little bit about cloud storage drives and I'll show you one drive and then, uh, you know, finding things, right? You know, that's, that's, that's what you want to do is where do you want to find things? Okay, um, let's talk about some commonalities between Windows and Macs. Um, and realistically, a lot of things with computers, but mostly when people think of PCs, they think of a Windows computer or an Apple Mac. Um, they both use this physical item called a disk or a drive, okay? It might be called a disk, it might be called a drive, uh, but, but they both use them, okay? And inside your drive you, is space you can use. Think of it like an electronic file cabinet. If you think of your storage on your computer like an electronic file cabinet, a lot of things start to make more sense. In your file cabinet, you can have folders and you can have files inside the folders as well. And so it's, it's an organization scheme that is based very much on how people were doing things in offices for years. You'd have a file cabinet and you'd have file folders with tabs on them. And then you'd have documents uh, of, inside the file folders themselves. And so that's really how files work on computers, only they're electronic documents, electronic pieces of information as opposed to physical. Um, I don't know if you've ever visited a, a, a movie studio or production studio where they have uh, old films and they used to have, they have old 35 millimeter films and canisters uh, that we're working. So um, we're gonna take a look at, at some of the questions. So about, uh, that, that's okay, Phil, uh, Todd. Um, we're gonna cover some of these questions as we go through the material. Um, and and take a look at what these things on clouds and finding files, because these are ways that, that they need to be organized, okay? Um, so we're talking about OneDrive and where, now you think of the cloud, um, it is a, another drive that is connected to your computer. If you have OneDrive or iCloud, or Google Drive, it is simply another disk drive, but instead of being physically inside your case, it is located somewhere out on the internet via uh, an internet connection that you get to. So when you store something and you save a file, you can save it on your, what's called your local drive, or you can save it on an accessory drive or you can save it on a cloud drive. It's kind of like putting money in the bank. If you have three different banks where you have money that you deposit, you could put money and say, well, just for you know convenience, say Wells Fargo and money in your credit union and money in say Chase. And it's still your money, right? You still have a, a record of your deposit. You still have a balance. But if you go to Chase, they can't give you the money that you have on deposit at Wells Fargo, can they? At least it's not easy, but, but you know, and so if you go to Wells Fargo, you get the Wells Fargo money. If you go to your credit union, you get the money you have in the credit union. If you go to the uh, Chase Bank, you get the money out of the Chase Bank. And disk drives are, are, think of disk drives like that, because some of them can be out on the internet. So you don't physically have the money in your hand that you have in your bank account, do you? If you said, I wanna see uh, the money you have specifically for my bank account, they just mix it all together, um, but it's there when you need it. And, and, and you can actually move it around electronically now as well. Okay, so we'll talk about backing up in OneDrive and Google Drive. There are some great classes that go into OneDrive um, Google Drive and iCloud a Drive that, that if you want to learn more specifically about storage um, and, and cloud storage, I recommend you take those classes. Uh, we're going to focus a little bit more on how to organize those files and as opposed to where they are in the cloud. But they're there. Okay, so 
let's talk about what files are. Okay, a, a piece of text, like a document is a file. Uh, you're probably familiar with using things like Microsoft Word or other types of document files, but it is a, a piece of text is a file. Okay, uh, an image, a photo is a computer file. It's made, it's called a digital photo because it's made of electronic information. But when you look at it, it displays on your computer screen as a photo or an image. A video, like a movie, you know, uh, YouTube or uh, Netflix or Amazon Prime or something you're streaming, those are digital files that can be sent electronically uh, and, and they move around via internet connections. But you can have a video that you record on your phone or a video you play on your computer for something as well. So those are our different types of files. And you've got music files, um, you know, or, or podcasts. Those are audio files. So there are different types of files that have different types of information. Um, and as the world of computers has become more sophisticated, remember in the early days of electronic communications, we had something that just did dots and dashes. It was called Morse code. That was the only type of electronic communications that existed in the world at one time. And now we can see each other on live video from our, our homes. You know, it, it's just amazing. But that's what's happened with electronic communications. But they're all, all, all the electronic data is a, is a file, but different types of files display different types of information. So we've got um, documents, we've got slide presentations, we've got uh, you know, uh, videos, we've got images, we've got music, and, and even applications. Like I did a class earlier this morning on PowerPoint uh, basics. And when you save a file in PowerPoint, it gets saved as a PowerPoint file. That means that when you open up a file on your computer, you have to have an application that can open up a text file or an image or a video or music or the application that you, the file was created in. And so all these files and what these files have is they have a little extension in them. So you might see a file that has something that ends in file name just for something dot txt and another one that has video dot uh, mp4 and another one called uh, my you know music dot mp3 these things after the dot they're called the file extension they tell your computer what application to use to open up the file. And your computer has some standard settings. So if you want to play a MP4 file, it knows I got to open up the video player application. If you want to play music, I'll open up the music player application. If you want to look at a Word document, I'll open up Microsoft Word. So your computer does all of this for you in the background. So with lots of times you don't even have to think about it. They're pretty impressive, but that's what files are. Any, any questions about files? We'll talk about backup and cloud and, and a few other things and how to name files better. Because all it is is a file is just something you name uh, that you save on your computer. Okay. All right, let me point out something else here. Where are our files located? We had a lot of questions about where they're located. Okay, files get saved on electronic storage devices. It's a it's a electronic storage devices. It's either magnetic or it is electronic. It's electronic in our smartphones and something called solid state drives. They're electronic circuits. They hold files. They hold data. And so um, our files can be on a disk drive locally on our computer. 
or a file can be on a disk drive that's out in the cloud somewhere um, that might be connected to the internet. So if we just use a, if I have a file, a disk drive here, and excuse my fantastic drawing skills, okay, and you have a computer like this that you have connected up. So you have one of these, it might have a disk drive built in, okay? That's called local, but you might have an internet connection out to some electronic storage location called the cloud, okay? Or you might have one that's on a physical cable that you have that's an accessory drive that sits on your desk, okay? So you can have computer, you can have a disk drive inside of your computer, a disk drive attached by a cable to a computer, or a disk drive that you get to over the internet. These are commonly is what people think of as the cloud, okay? That's, that's the cloud is storage is, is just like, instead of being local where you can physically touch it, it's just over a wire over the internet. Um, and in the understanding of the cloud class, we go into a lot of more details about advantages and disadvantages and, and what happens when you save things in the cloud. Okay, your computer gives you what's called some default folders. Um, kind of think like, like when, you, uh, when you buy a car, it's got some default um, settings on it. It's got a, a, a drive, a reverse, neutral, park, okay? When you buy um, a, uh, you know, a, a product of some kind, sometimes it has some standard settings on it for things that are used commonly. The, your computer comes with some standard folders. They're empty, but they are there for you to use right away. And most of the time, you'll keep documents and uh, any other files in your documents folder. Photos get kept in a photos folder. Movies usually get kept in a movies folder. And things you download from the internet get saved in a download folder. And so those are folders that come preset on almost every computer, Macs and PCs. Any questions about that? They're there for you. And if you save something, chances are it'll probably get saved in your documents unless it's a photo or a movie. Sorting is possible. All of the file folder tools on Macs and Windows PCs give you the ability to sort your files, but it can only sort them based on the names that you give it. So I don't know if you're the kind of person that is a, a shoebox collector, you know, collector of information. So if you, I have friends that save receipts all year long and they just throw them in a shoebox. And then when they go to get their taxes done, they take the shoebox to their tax repair and say, well, here's all my receipts for the year, right? Um, somebody has to go through and sort, you know, what, what those receipts were for and what they were spent on. And that doesn't make it easy for the tax repair and they charge you for the time it takes to do that. Um, but if you were a little more organized and you put your receipts or in documents into order when, and sorted them out by maybe numbering. Okay, so this is receipt number one, or this is receipt number two or 10 or 20 or 30. It makes it a little bit easier to find things if you have a number assigned to it. It's like when you look at, at TV shows Sometimes I'm watching uh, Downton Abbey, you know, the series. And so I never watched it when it was, was on live. And each episode has a number. So you have season one, episode four, season two, episode 13. So numbers are a way people use to organize things, right? Letters, alphabetical order. A, you know, if when you when you go into a a classroom or or you want to sort a list, you can sort things alphabetically. So using letters in your uh, file names can help you out. File types, you, you, know, you saw me mention text and video and images. 
Uh, there are tools in your computer, and I'm going to show you on my, my PC and my Mac how you can organize, how you can use the sorting tools. But if the file doesn't necessarily have a name, it makes it a little bit more challenging to find and sort. But these are some things that are built in to your file application on your computer that will help you sort them, even by the size of the file or the date you added it or created or modified it as well. Now, it's like having a bunch of, of pots, you know, of different sizes and different colors in, in just, you know, a, a, a hectic organization. But when you start to give them some naming, um, you can change them a little bit, you know, you can change them and make them all neat and organized, you know, so that you have all the blue pots of one size together and all the beige pots and all the flower pots and everything organized. It's like how you find things in your kitchen, how you find things around your house, um, the easier it is with how you keep your clothing in your closet or your drawers. Um, you typically have some kind of mechanism in your mind for sorting them and just think about things that you might want to use to sort files on your computer. That will make it easy. The other thing you can do is you can name a file. Um, it's possible to use 256 characters of text in the name of a file. So when you save something, you can save it and call it you know, April 15th, 2021, uh, Bob's, you know, advice on how to save files on my computer. And you still got plenty of room left. And then when you go to search for that file, you can find, you can use the search tools in Windows 10. There's a search function in the bottom on Macs. There's a search function on the top right with the mag magnifying glass is the, I'm going to have to get a real magnifying glass so I can hold it up and say, this is how you search your computer, right? Uh, but if you gave that name, that file a unique name, you could just start typing it in and your computer will find it for you just by searching for it. So if you say, gee, what files do I have that have the word books in them? What files do I have that have the word uh, 2020 in them or 1986 or whatever, um, your computer can help you find those things very quickly if you include it in the file name. So it's another way and it'll search everywhere on your computer. So your computer is capable of searching itself um, for things. And, and I'll show you some of those tips. Um, so Gail said, when I download something, um, you're, when you download something from the internet, it'll put it into a download folder, wherever that happens to be on your computer. And I tend to move things, it's just me, but I tend to move things out of the download folder into another folder to make it easier for me to find. So like I do a lot of classes where I download pictures for um, background presentations. Uh, for I teach a class on Zoom virtual backgrounds for beginners. And, and I teach a class, I taught one yesterday on uh, finding free photos on the internet. And yes, they'll download your folders to, they'll download your those things from the internet to a folder called downloads. I will typically move, if I want to keep it, I'll typically move it around and I'll typically give it another name so I understand what it was I downloaded in the first place. So if it was a picture of say tulips, I'll know it's a picture of tulips that I used. But there's just, everybody has their own technique for organizing. It's just a matter of what works best for them. And, and drag and dropping is, is just a matter of literally dragging and dropping things over from one folder to another. I actually saved a couple of PowerPoint presentations in places where I, didn't want them uh, so that I can show you. So use long names. Think about giving your files alphabetical names and you can give folders names as well. And then think about a technique of photographers use a technique. Photographers that take thousands and thousands of pictures a year end up with 
hundreds of thousands of files. And so the way they keep track of them is pretty consistent. They usually give put the year and the month and the date they created that file in the name of their file. And that's not a bad filing system. If you go into you know, old you know, offices and archives and libraries, libraries organize things by uh, you know, the Library of Congress system where it's done by topic or they do it by uh, date it was published, or they do it by the name of the author. So anything you can put in the file name that will help you locate it better is going to be a good technique. But photographers are, are great examples of things they, they do. And they'll give put the year, the month, the date they took the picture, and the location lots of times, and the topic or the name of the, the, the event it was located at. So they're just different techniques for doing different types of, of organizing, but develop a, a system that will help you out. Anybody have any systems they're using for organizing their files now that you know are, are good techniques that they might want to share? Or are we all system free, you know, <laughs> and say, gosh, give me a system, Bob, please. Okay. All right. Well, let's take a look at, at my. Windows uh, desktop first, and then we'll take a look at my um, uh, lap, my other, my other system here. Let me find my Windows desktop. There we go. Because I have a couple of things going on here. Okay, in Windows, there are a couple of ways to get to your files, and Macs have very similar things. They're just called different names. Windows has something called file. Explorer. It's usually an icon in your taskbar like this that looks like a file folder. And when you click on it, it opens up your file system on your computer. Uh, typically on the left, you'll have names of your hard drives uh, that are available to you and anything that's connected over the network. And it will typically show you things that are frequently used, okay? Um, but it also shows you a downloads folder. It also will show you pictures that you have and any folders that you've created. And I have iCloud Drive that I use. Um, it shows you what you have in your desktop. And so these are quick access and they have a little arrow here that gives you a, a, a way of looking at them. If I click on the arrow, it, it, it shortens the view of these things. So if I want to see things on this PC, I can view them and I can see what's on my local disk or I can see what's in documents. Um, and if I don't want that view, I can, these have subfolders. So these arrows are navigation tools that let you expand or um, reduce what you're actually looking at. And so it's just a matter of what you're looking at. So if I look at OneDrive, for example, and I look at presentations, um, here are some presentations that I created. We created one today, this morning called Spring Flowers, and it'll show you a little PowerPoint icon. It tells you that it was created, but I named it Spring Flowers April 15th. Okay, so if I wanted to open this folder, I can double click it, but it tells me that it was, it's, it's on my computer um, and in the cloud. Um, it tells me that I created it and modified it 415, 2021, 932. And it is a PowerPoint file and it has a certain size to it, okay? So I put it in presentations. I could have put it in documents. Here's two files that I have that are slide presentations in documents. And somebody asked, how do I drag and drop them? Well, if I wanted to put this folder, this file in the presentations folder instead of the documents folder, I just literally click on it to select it. And I just drag it down to presentations. And you see that little uh, pop-up that said move to presentations. Yeah, I want to do that. And I just let go and it's moved it. 
the presentation. So it's possible just to click on a folder, click on a file and drag it to any folder you want to drop it into. It's literally drag and drop, whatever you want to do. Um, so there are music folders that I have in music. Um, there's pictures that I have in the pictures folder. And so um, I, you can organize them and you can move them around however you want to. And so uh, there's a, in the cloud situation, you'll see sometimes a, a small, tiny cloud icon. That means that what's ever in that folder or that file is just in the cloud. If it has a checkbox, it means it's on your local computer and in the cloud as well. I'm gonna show you a, a folder that has a lot of information. Uh, if I look at my documents, for example, it has a lot of folders. Let's go to my this PC and let's expand it and let's go to documents and let's go to my books folder, okay? Um, I keep my the books that I write, I give a name to them, uh, I create a folder for them and I put all of the files that have to do with that book in that folder. Okay, so this shows me a view of these files, but you can change how you look at files. Okay, so you'll see I use a lot of dates. I use the year and a month and the name of the file to help me organize some of them. Okay, some of them I didn't do it with. Okay, but, but uh, some of them I... Uh, file like the last edition of the book and I'll put folders in there. But you can see a couple of things that are going on here. I can search just in this folder. So if I wanted to search here and find just cover um, folders with the, the name files with the name cover in them, I could just search and it'll show me a list of files that have the name cover in them. So I don't have to go looking for them if I just wanna find files with the name cover in them. If I wanted to search for 2021 files, I just type 2021 and it shows me files with the, 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 with the date of 2021 in them. And so this is this search box exists within a particular folder. So it'll say search results here. The other thing I can do is I can look at uh, the view. If I look, go back, I have something that's getting created for me automatically, and it's called a breadcrumb. Um, you remember the Hansel and Gretel fairy tale, right? Uh, they left breadcrumbs, right, to find their way home. Well, Breadcrumbs exist in computers too. Uh, and as you can see, as I go through file folders, I, I go from one folder down to another. Uh, it shows me the breadcrumb, the path I'm going down. So if I want to go from, this is the blogging for fun and profit book, but my last folder was books and my last folder was documents and my last folder was this PC. So I can go back down the, the path again. I can go from uh, to documents and you can see as soon as I go down one more folder, it adds that little trail to where I was looking at and shows me what I was looking at last. And so I have the ability to go back and forth in using this breadcrumb tool to go back and forth. I can always create a new folder too. Now, this is what I love about both File Explorer and about Mac. So I'm gonna show you exactly the same folder on a Mac, okay, and what it looks like. But in the File Explorer tool within Microsoft, there's this thing called View. And View gives you the ability to change how you look at a folder uh, uh, or uh, on your computer. I am using what's called small icons, but I can scroll over 
each of these views and you can see how it changes. I can look at list and it'll save it. The next time I look at this folder, it'll show me a list. Okay, now if I have a list of files in this and I'm looking at a list view, I can click sort by and I can sort by a particular column. So I can sort by name and it changes it and puts them in alphabetical order. Now it'll take a number and it'll put the smallest number first and then it puts letters like B and C and G and puts them in alphabetical order. So you always have the ability to sort by folders uh, if you want to. I can change to details. Details gives me the name of the file, the date it was modified, the type of file it was, and how big it is, if I'm trying to clean things up. I can look at tiles. If I prefer tiles, it shows me a little bit of information about the, the fold, the file, and what's in it. It shows me a preview. I can show it as small icons, as medium icons, as large icons, or as extra large icons. Then I have to scroll through, but I can get a pretty good preview of, of what's in this file. If it's a PDF document, it'll show me a PDF inf piece of information here. If it's a Word document, it'll show me Word. Um, and then I can always go and view it. So you have the ability to change the view of your files. I personally just like list view because I name my files and I can easily sort them uh, for things like that. But your file organize, file explorer gives you the ability to view. I can even create what's called a preview pane view so that if I click on a file that it can preview, it'll show a preview of the file as I select it, whatever I'm looking at. Now, sometimes it won't be able to show you a preview because of the kind of dot file it is, but it'll give you the, if it can, it'll show a preview if you like that. So within the actual file, views itself, it gives you the ability to take a look at a lot of things. So here's downloads. We were looking at pictures. These are in download. So if I wanted to move this around, I can just drag it. Or if I didn't want to save it, um, this is a recording, an MP4 file. If I wanted to delete it. I can do it in a lot of ways. I can drag it to my recycle bin here and drop it there and it'll put it in the recycle bin. It doesn't remove it from my computer until I empty the recycle bin. Or if I want to click on it, I can right click on it and I can select delete and it will put it in the recycle bin for me because somebody asked how they, um, they do it. Yeah, we're having, Leona, we are having some problems with Zoom connections for some reason today uh, that are actually had, I actually kicked me off of a meeting yesterday. So Diane, that's how you can get rid of files you don't want. If I wanted to move a file to the cloud that I downloaded, I could just drag it over to the documents folder in my OneDrive, which is my cloud drive and I can, it'll show up there. So now there's this meeting information here. It's actually a chat, you know, it's a meeting calendar event. Um, email attachments might get saved here. Um, pictures I can save here and uh, I can just double click. So I'm looking at large icons, but if I change it to list view, it changes to list, but I have a class uh, called, I ca called PowerPoint class pictures. And I have a folder there that I, I use for some pictures. And you can see here's this breadcrumb. But I put usually put a date and, and a, a month with my photos. I'm not always 100% uh, 
accurate, but if I wanted to find, say, a Huntington Beach wetlands or an East LA night view picture, I could just do a search here and I could find my picture. So the search tool here on your desktop gives you the ability to search for in your documents uh, or in photos or other places. So if I wanted to search and file explore, it's another way of opening them up. And it opens up another window. And you can actually have two file folder, file explorer windows open at the same time. If you're interested in having a second one open, you can just open up a second one. And that way you can move things around if you get more sophisticated. Now, these are some things that I have in documents on OneDrive. This is on my PC. So this is what the books look like folder look like. And if I look at this folder, blogging for fun and profit, this is what it looks like on a PC view. What does it look like on a Mac? Okay, okay. thank you, Thomas. So I'm going to close a few things here and change my share view so I can show you what it looks like on a Mac because it looks really, really similar. Okay, so there's my, I'm going to move this over to another screen here. Um, so I can, and then I'm going to show you on my Mac, if I go to my file application on my Mac, it's called Finder. So when you hover on a Mac down to your desktop and you click on Finder, it opens up a list of file folders. And here's my folder called books. Um, and here's my blogging for fun and profit that I can click on. And here's a list of all of these items. If you click on the top, usually in both Macs and PCs, it'll automatically sort them in alphabetical order. And in Macs, instead of having that view button, um, it does have a view option up at the top. So I can view these as icons, or I can view them as a list, or I can view them as a gallery. Um, but I can even change the views here if I want to in the actual Explorer. This is how Macs do it and, and change these views because they use these little icons here to be able to, to look at them. And um, it, it's, it, I just prefer list view, but it gives you details of it on the right, whatever you want. I have a question. Can you make the font a little bigger, please? Uh, not on a Mac, unfortunately. I can't do that. Um, if you go to your Zoom, uh, where it says uh, at the top, you're a viewing Bob Cohen screen, and yeah. you go to a view options. Right. Uh, you do have the ability on your side to make it larger just by selecting a larger view. And oh, you, can, you. you can change thank it you. on your end. Sure, sure. So thank you've got you. that. Whenever you're in a Zoom meeting, you've got that ability to do it. Because uh, okay. sometimes we can change what appears on the screen uh, in font size, and sometimes we can't. Thank you. Sure, sure. So... Let me take a look at, at some questions here. Let me stop sharing for a second and see what kinds of questions we've got in chat. Let me move my gallery over here. So Leona, uh, you're waving, right? I have a question, Bob. Sometimes when I'm moving files and I inadvertently hit something that I'm not supposed to hit and all of a sudden you see the yellow bar like it's transferring information somewhere and it's gone and I can't find what I've set where accidentally. Is there a way to see what you've just done accidentally? <laughs> Does that, um, that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Because sometimes that's happened to me where you drag a file and you think you're putting it into one folder and you put right. it in another. Um, if you, there, there's, I don't know if there's an undo function. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen here and uh, show you this. Okay, hold on a second. We'll, we'll look, okay? 
Um, because okay. in a lot of applications, there's an undo function. So if we look at file, explore, um, file, help, close. Um, so I've got, we've got some uh, furious sound coming up. Uh, Ty, can you mute everyone? Because we've got some background noise coming up. Thank you. Okay. So if I, I don't know if there's an undo function here. Oh, yes, there is. Oh, my gosh, I didn't even know that was there till you asked. So thank you, Leona. You helped me learn something new about File Explorer. Here's what I did. Let me try and show it to you. And File Explorer, whatever you're doing, um, I don't know if this will work or not, but let's try it. This is a recent file where I've saved a meeting chat here. If I want to move it to say presentations uh, and just dragged it like that. And I said, oh gosh, I didn't want to do that. In the top menu here, there's a little drop down arrow and maybe I can do undo. And it, yes, it restores it back to its original location. Wow, I didn't even know it could do that. You know, I mean, technology is amazing what, what it can do. So. This is when you when you open up File Explorer on your computer and you use that little drop down menu called customize, but there is an undo button. Now why? Oh, okay. So now that I've clicked on this, I know what I did. I'm customizing the menu. There's actually an undo button now that I can make set up there so it appears automatically. So that I have it at the top of my item. So if I just said undo, and it'll tell you, uh, it has this little pop-up. It's really small, I know, but it says undo copy of meeting, you know, so I, I or move, it'll tell, give you the ability to undo what you last did automatically there. That's amazing. How did, you, how, did, how did you get that to pop up there where you didn't have to open it up to see the undo? What, um, did, what did you do? In the top menu next to where it says file explorer, the above file, home, share, view, uh -huh. Okay. There's a little tiny arrow that gives me the ability to customize what they call a quick access toolbar. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's what that, th these icons here is that, you know, files, um, I can close it. Then there's things that I can check here as well. So uh, you can do these things uh, as well. And you can, you can, set them up, but you can customize the, the file on quick access toolbar. On, on you know, the Mac, you, you have this little magnifying glass and on Macs, you have similar tools to be able to do it as well. Um, I just find when, I, when I'm using search more and more and more, rather than worrying too much about where I put things, although I do like to organize things into folders a lot, um, I will oftentimes just go and, and search for things. So on a Mac, if I stop sharing here and I share my whole screen, because I have to do that to show you my Mac, um, if I go to the upper right uh, in the, on the Mac, there's a little menu bar at the top of a Mac. And if I click on the search, it's uh, called Spotlight Search. And if I wanted to find, uh, say, a book on blogging, uh, that's the title of it. Bob, what was that button again? I'm so sorry. Where is that? Which one is that search button? I'm um, sorry. It's in, uh, it's in, if you look at the top menu on your mm -hmm. Mac, uh -huh. uh, where it starts with the Apple symbol on the upper left. Right. Go all the way to the far right. Uh-huh. And there'll be the time of day. And if you start moving to the left a little bit, you see a little magnifying glass. Oh, you just made my life a lot easier. Thank uh, you. Yes. <laughs> and, and now the great thing about it, there's another way to do it as well on a Mac. Um, and there probably is on Windows as well. But if you hit the command key and the space bar on your Mac, you will bring up the search also with a shortcut. But you can see, uh, uh, here's all of the information when I typed in blogging on a Mac. But if I wanted to look for, say, a, 
a, a Zoom, my Zoom folder where my chats are kept and you know you don't want to find worry about it. If I just type in Zoom, oh, I got to spell it right. That helps. Uh, Zoom, um, there is the ability to find the app. Uh, there, I can search the web or I can search in Finder, which means it's going to search on my computer. So here is everything that has to do with, with Zoom. Um, and I can find it on my desktop. I can find other things that I've saved that have the word Zoom in them. Uh, but Zoom saves all of your chats in a folder that's created automatically in documents. So remember, um, you can click on a column and, and sort things. So if I wanted to get right to the Z's, I could scroll down to the bottom. There's my Zoom folder. It Zoom saves it in documents on PCs and on Macs, but I can click on this. And if I double click on the Zoom folder, uh, every Zoom chat session is saved in a Zoom folder. So if you're wondering, gee, where is this going, Bob? Where's the chat that's saved? Um, it's saved in the Zoom folder, and this is today at 10 a.m. Let's do the other one because here it's 7.07, .07, but it says meeting save chat. There's that .txt. It's a .txt folder, and it will actually display it, you know, um, in your, uh, it'll open it up automatically with an application. The key thing is naming things and then putting them into folders that you might want. You can keep everything in documents. Um, when you use Word, Microsoft Word, it'll come up with recently used things. Uh, if you search in Word, it'll, but organizing things into folders and files, it's a great way to kill a day. You know, if you're looking for something to do, you know, on a, on a rainy day or something, and you wonder, gee, what should I do with my afternoon? instead of organizing your clothes and you know, organize your files on your computer and fit, create folders, you know, that names that help you organize and just start dragging things around into them that, that make it easier for you to find things whenever you're looking for things on your computer. Uh, it helps, but there's a lot of tools that are built in to make it easier for you. Think of your disk drive as a file cabinet and folders that you put in as file folders. And uh, think of your cloud as just a file cabinet that is yours. Just It's just out on the internet instead of physically inside your computer. So hopefully that makes it a little easier to understand. I mean, file organization is, is, is a challenge, I know, but, uh, but it's something that you can uh, work on and, and if you spend a little time uh, using file names that help you search, you know, I mean, the, like the search that I showed, uh, you know, on Macs and PCs, that little magnifying glass will search your computer for files. It'll use the default folders like documents and pictures and music, the sorting tools. Um, You've got just tons of tools to organize and sort things with and try and get in the habit of using some names that will help you out. Okay. Um, so Yolanda, you said when you click on the top of a column or you click on the sort uh, button in any folder, it'll uh, give you the ability to alphabetize or sort things as well. And when you want to create folders in Macs or PCs, go to file. Whenever you're in the finder tool on a Mac, just go to file, new, and it'll let you create a new folder. On a PC, if you're in file explorer, just go to file, new folder, and it'll create a new folder for you. Okay, thank you. Sure, sure. Okay, any, any questions that we did not get to? Because we've covered a lot. Boy, this was a busy hour, wasn't it, you know? But but now you know what to do with the rest of your day, right? Organize your files on your computer. I know you're gonna go do that. And like, but if you get creative with naming things, um, it makes it really, really easy to just search for them no matter where you kept them.
And some people are adopting that approach. I'm, I'm kind of a, a year, month, date person. You know, when I organize things, I tend to organize things by, by year. So when I kit documents, I store them by year and things like that and, uh, and tend to do that when I create files. But not everybody's that way. You know, and I, I like to give a lot folders names and make it easy for me to find things that way too. Okay. A um, couple of other classes. If you're using a PC, OneDrive and iCloud, or if you're using Google Drive, they're all just like a bank account out on the internet where you keep your storage. But we do a class on understanding the cloud if you'd like to learn where it is and, and what it, how it works. Um, you know, we do some classes on Windows 10 settings and uh, Zoom virtual backgrounds. I do those. Uh, there's some a lot of classes on cloud storage out there. You're going to get some notes and with some websites that I found that are useful links for both uh, Windows and Mac users to help you find files and organize them. Um, and uh, we appreciate any feedback you've got. If you'd like to see more or, or less, you know, let us know. Either way, we're happy to, to, to read. We do, I read all of the feedback that everybody goes and I go in once a day and, and I want to see what, what comments people had about the class because um, the more you know we learn from our learners, the more we can do to make the class better. Um, thank you, RG, Rose. Okay, appreciate it. Pilar, thank you uh, for joining. And uh, Pilar is one of our other instructors. She does fitness uh, and, and uh, wellness classes for us. Um, spread the word about get set up. Hi, is she actually on video? Yeah. What do you, what Pilar, why don't you, what classes do you do? Uh, um, okay. I have right now two classes going on and one is called skincare for mature skin. And the other one, it's, uh, health, uh, how to spice up your healthy meals. And starting Monday at 9 AM Eastern standard time, we're going to have a cardio dance class. And I'm going to do also a conversational Spanish because you probably guessed that I do speak Spanish. So <laughs> that's it. And yeah, we're getting more into the wellness area. So you guys can come and join me. I would love to share my information with you. Okay. Great. Thank you, Bob. The class was great. You just saved my life today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Okay. So uh, you can request a recording at help at get set up. Thanks a lot to Todd for, uh, helping me keep up with chat. And uh, it's great when we have a little bit larger class to have a TA in it. And uh, uh, today was my, my first day of using some brand new hearing aids. And so uh, it's kind of interesting getting used to them. Sound change, I, I'm, uh, I have a little bit of a hearing impairment, not bad, but, but I do need to wear a new set fitted. Uh, everything sounds a little bit differently at first. So it's a little, a little distraction. Um, Thanks for everybody for coming. Hope you learned something new today, okay, that you can put to use and uh, that you can take thank advantage you. of, okay? Thank, thank you, everybody, for the feedback. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you both. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a great rest of the afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pilar. Glad I was able to save your day. <laughs> oh, yeah, you did. I mean, I'm new to Mac and I'm going a little cuckoo here because. Okay, great. Right, right. <laughs> so right, thank right. you. You say, can I ask a quick question? I'm sorry yeah. I'm bothering you. That's um, okay. I downloaded a bunch of stuff and I have it on my desktop. And the other day, I don't know what I did. And I used to have it like in little folders. And now everything is spread out on my on my uh, desktop. So I oh, wanted to yeah. bring it back to where it was before because it's and I don't know how to do that. Well, what you can do on a Mac, uh, let me share my screen here for you. Um, and I'll, I'll create I'll create kind of something you might have done too. Yeah. Right. See, I had it like you, right? Like those, exactly. I had the little Rags blue folders. From downloads here. And they just ended up on your desktop randomly like that or something. Well, I used to have everything like on the little, like the blue folders that you have. And um, I don't know what I did that all the folders open up and everything that was in those blue folders is spread out in the entire thing. So I wanted to go back to the little blue folders like I had it before. And I don't know how to do it. Okay, so, so uh, yeah, I have I have folders that I created on my desktop. So, mm -hmm. one thing you can do 
is is you can go up to your uh, when you're in your finder when you right. go to finder mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you click on desktop okay mm -hmm. on your left row mm -hmm. um, you can create a folder or you can organize everything from this list here okay so oh, have okay. i have i have three pictures so if i click on one I can use my shift key and I can select many of them at once. Ah, okay, got it. Then if I right click, the right clicks, even though my on your Mac mouse, there's not specifically a right click button. If you mm -hmm. do put your finger in the upper right corner of your mouse and you right click it, mm -hmm. you have this option to create a new folder with the ah. selection right away. Good. Thank you. So, and then it creates a new folder with these items and put them all in here, okay? okay. Then you right. name it, you know, I'll call, I'll call this new folder, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's an easy way to organize things fast. Okay, perfect. So use I Finder, thank you. Use just to look at the desktop and then, so I know sometimes when you when you click in a certain sequence or have, uh, it'll expand a folder uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's probably what happened to you. All right. Okay. But, yeah, it's a fast way to do it. Perfect. I'll do that. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. you have a good day, sir. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Have a good Thank day. You. Thank you. Bye.